You want to do it? If it doesn't, you go. You can do three, two, three, one. It doesn't matter. Two, one. Hello, internet. It is international or just, I guess it must be international podcast day, correct, time? Yeah, and we hope that you listen to more podcasts than just the one that NPR puts on. For 18 weeks throughout the year. And we should say this is Haim's second 30-minute segment. So he's really celebrating Podcast Day. And what is the hashtag? I don't know. I, I've called it International Podcast Day. It seems a little it seems a little long. I think it's just hashtag Podcast Day. In any case, this is the 187th episode of the Tech Podcast in 30. Thank you for listening to this podcast probably after uh, Podcast Day, which is September 30th for some reason. Um, if you're listening to this OSX I should say OS 10 rather, uh, 11, 11 has been released. So download El Capitan. I just wanted to say that there, are t- I said this right before the show, there's 1,227 ratings and it's a five star review. I don't know. How, how did you're, that, talking, you're talking about Blab now. So by the time this makes its way into iTunes, people will have no idea what you're talking about. So briefly tell people how we've jumped ship from Google Hangouts a little bit. Uh, to use blab.im, which does not work in Safari, by the way. It's having some issues. Tom and I had some issues. It's beta, so first off, it's beta. But two, it's very clean. It's very fast. And I don't know how they're going to monetize. I hope they're not going to do something bad. But right now, I like it. You can tweet to it. There's the whole Blab team all of a sudden like comes and watches. We have five it, viewers. It, it, it is quick. I mean, it certainly is quick. And I don't know what type of programming jujitsu you have to do behind the scenes to get it to, to be this smooth. But it doesn't feel like after you've started the episode, like we have to kind of be walking on eggshells because it could crash at any time or something. So kudos to them on that. And I'm very impressed that they, they use the YouTube API to allow direct uploading to YouTube. No, 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 no. They, they, they format it in a way that you could just download oh, it. I see. You have to, okay. So you do have to bring it local first time. Okay. Yeah, and, but it takes, it takes all of the whole process takes like 10 minutes. So. All right. We're, we're really getting off topic now, uh-huh. but yes, kudos to blab that I am. Thank you for, uh, giving us a home away from Hangouts. But um, I actually, I need you to take me through this episode as if I have never listened to a Google announcement before because I just saw the headlines. I saw pictures of the new Chromecast. I saw pictures of the Nexus 6P or whatever it is. I really don't even know. And I was kind of impressed. Uh, I, I had that sensation that it was a really good uh, uh, kind of keynote for, for Google. But I was so keynoted out from Apple's that I couldn't even dig into it. So, Heim, tell me, what, what, what did Google uh, you know, give well, to the world? The problem with the Google announcement, I just want to start off with that, is that they didn't stop. Like, there was no deep breath. There was no welcome. It's like, let's go. They, there, was no, there was no applause. There was a lot of really corny jokes that no one – that like, no applause. There was, like, no time to take a deep breath. It was, okay – New Nexus phones. Okay, we're moving on to you know the Chromecast. Maybe, New Chromecast. You know, I think the reason that I just I, I just kind of didn't realize this until you said that, Han. The reason I didn't dig into it deeply, you know, I just kind of very – and normally for any Google announcement, I would go in hardcore and want to know every detail. It's because it seemed like there was so much. I thought I needed to, like, download it to my – like, uh, uh, an Ars Technica – article to my kindle to understand what this announcement was for so now hi in the probably five minutes we have left after the bs <laughs> intro that was 20 minutes uh w- take me through it with save me the trouble of having to use sent to kindle okay so we first start off with 1.4 million activations one oh. 30 day users 30 day actives i guess they call it they have 1.4 billion 30 oh, day, billion 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 must be on the google play store yeah, look, either way, they have they you, have a you, lot. You said that they raced through it, that they were they, they didn't take a breath, but notice how Tim Cook got rid of the pie charts, got rid of the graphs in the beginning, and now you're starting with, with No, they start look, they just said that. They're like this, this is- Android one, and then they moved on. You heard about New Nexus? We have two new Nexuses. <laughs> okay, let's first start off with Marshmallow. I, Marshmallow I, I, is this. Like you can't even I, stop. I have to I have to say this. Since they started since Way back when, when I know it, it wasn't, you know, Sonora Pichai who made this decision, certainly. But I'm st- when I think of Google's user statistics, I am still so skeptical since they started saying that Google Plus had like 10 billion users. They, they, I need to give them, they need to like take a break for a few years and really prove that they're showing us how many people are actually using the stuff. 
but I get it. I mean, look, it sounds like it makes sense considering how many Android devices are out in the wild. Okay, so push that aside because I need to know about the hardware. And as of right now, Haim, I, I, like, I'm going to have to Google it. And I'm, I'm going to have to like print okay, it Okay, so first two things. We have two new Nexus. I don't know what the plural of Nexus is. Nexus iPhones, 5X and 6P. 5X is the, the upgrade from the Nexus 5, which people love. Okay. Everyone loved the Nexus 5. I love my Nexus 5, but it's two years old. No one bought the 6. So it's just it's uh, it's made by LG, the same company did the other one. It's it's not high end, but it's not mid range. What, what, what's what's the price? It's uh, three seventy nine for for sixteen gigs. So so here here's where I'm at. I still and I mean that, look, I, I would trust Google's Nexus line still. It, I just if I had to recommend a Nexus versus a Motorola, I still wouldn't know exactly where to go. But I appreciate that Google is putting this out there. I yeah. should say that. I, as I've seen the, the current crop of Samsung phones, I am really, really unimpressed. Well, hold on, we'll get there. So, so they, so then they have the six P, which is the five point seven inch phone. So it's the same sizes as the, the Apple phones, and this is four ninety nine. It comes standard thirty two gigs, and it's a, it's a, it's an extra gig of RAM. So from two to three gigs, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a slightly better screen. It's two K rather than ten eighty P. It's both cameras are good. So it's like, which one do you, it's really, which one do you want with the six piece being slightly more premium of a build? What? Okay. I mean, I guess that's what the P stands for. What are the special elements of it that you don't get from the spec sheet? Because I, I, I saw that they're doing, they're doing a fingerprint thing. I didn't, I didn't catch what made it better than apples or different than apples. And what are the other like tidbits that, you know, the stuff that interests me, the stuff that, you know, was on a whiteboard for a really long time, and then some genius figured out how figured it figured out how to implement it or something. Well, you're looking at the so, so the fingerprint reader is one USB Type C is the second one. So it's going to be USB Type C, which it's, is the second phone to have that. It's very gutsy of them to make that change. I'd say. So now I bought I bought two. I bought two six Ps, and I'm giving one to my dad. And the issue is now that I, I have to explain to him. Oh, by the way, this USB C is going to be awesome. Just mm-hmm. not right now. And it's almost like, well, we, I really kind of wish he can have the choice of a USB 2 just so so he doesn't have to cheat Micro USB. Micro I mean, USB. I'm almost surprised that Google, and I don't know what this would have, this maybe would have made the adoption of USB-C take a really long time. Maybe it wasn't feasible at a manufacturing level. I, I, I'm i surprised that maybe their market position is strong enough that they think that they can push people towards USB-C. Maybe it's small enough that they think that they have core users who are going to go for it, but it's a good, or maybe they think that other manufacturers will now play by that tune because it is better. It's a better user experience. And I was just turning on Nexus 7 because I was doing a Wi-Fi test and I use it for that purpose. And honestly, I have to fiddle with the micro USB thing every time. And you think about lightning, it's never a second thought. So it's good that they did it, certainly. Okay. Um, it's the 6 piece made by... I'm I'm sorry I can't pronounce this. I should be better at it. I uh, see. I missed what you said because of a Wi-Fi issue. What did you say? The Nexus Six P, the higher end phone, yeah. is made by the Chinese company that starts with oh, the name Han Hai. No, Yahweh. H U A W E I. Hanway. Hanway. Okay. Well, either way. So there's it's 64 bit processor, which may be the first phone on Android to be 64 bit. Mm-hmm. And and the new spec. So we got we went from Retina. We have now. How big are the pixels? So it's a 12.3 megapixel and it's 1.55 micro micrometers. Oh, is it the little F thing? Is that what it is? No, no, no. That's the aperture. Oh, nanometers. So it's basically how big. And I'm so stupid. I'm, I'm like such an idiot for not knowing this. It's the biggest pixel compared to any other phone on the market, including the iPhone. So and you want a bigger pixel to capture Per pixel, more there's more digital information is stored more light yeah, it's, yeah or, is it it's, opti- or is it an optical thing where more light gets in per pixel for the ccd well if you have to put 12.3 million pixels on a piece of whatever a piece of uh silicone. Thing, on silicone you do you silicon. want silicon you're right <laughs> silicone is the other thing okay uh the bigger the pixel is the more data and the sure. more light and everything is so this is a very good camera and and, and here, there's two questions that i have then who do they source the camera from is it a sony camera it's, it's a sony camera and and then the second one is who is making a 64-bit processor is this a samsung thing it's a it? it's a snapdragon and they're all based exactly. on arm so okay. it's a, so it's an arm chip in this case it's the snapdragon 810 which people have issues with because it overheated but mm-hmm. 
I, I'm sure Google. So, so get these specs out of the way. So what? Go back to the fingerprint sensor because the specs. I could. What is the deal with it though? Is it is it the same? I mean, Touch ID works exactly as you'd expect a fingerprint reader to work. The ones where you have to rub your finger on it, like. So they they're putting the fingerprint sensor on the dimple in the back of the phone underneath the camera. So as your your thumb never naturally goes there. Your thumb. But you, has, no, but you don't need to use your thumb. You can use your forefinger. Okay, absolutely, you're right. Which is there's, an LG thing. LG so did that. There's still no physical. There's there's still no button that is parallel to the screen. Then is that right? Correct. I mean, I still okay. Well, somebody once said that why couldn't the fingerprint sensor be on the power button itself? That's a good. I mean, so but effectively, that's what. Apple did. I mean, the home button wakes the phone just like the sleep wake button does. It yeah. doesn't put it to sleep. So, I mean, that the answer is that's how you do it. And that's why the front mounted, okay, I, I, I mean, that you, you can, I'm sure by the tone of my voice, can, anyone listening could tell that I've said that in about a million other shows. Okay, so push that aside though. You're, is the answer that there is nothing special about these things besides the specs? Look, it's it's a, it's a phone to run. The, it's it's a reference phone for developers. Okay. So no, there's no like like wow, this has this amazing killer feature. Okay. I just want to spend a, a little more, like ten seconds more. Why though, if it's the reference phone, is this the the, the phone you go to for the consummate consumer of your father? Why you know it doesn't you know that's the question. Is it because it's so vanilla that nothing will get in his way? Why is it for, good for him? Well, okay. Well, there's two reasons. One, I'll have it. So, and because it's That's vanilla, nice. my entire family has Nexus phones. So anybody can walk them through because it's identical. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So even when we get the updates, I'm not two updates ahead of him. Okay. And and three, and this is probably another topic, is the fact that somehow the prices of phones have gotten so out of control. I think Google learned its lesson last year when they tried to increase the price. People said no. We have this really good phone in the Nexus 5, and you want us to pay $650 to upgrade to the Nexus 6. We're not going to do it. So you you're starting to see – oh, you're starting to see all these phones in the $400 and lower mark that are really good, the OnePlus 2, the Moto X, the Moto G at like 150 So you're getting a lot of phones at these really low price points to say, hey, wait a second. You want an iPhone? And you want to pay the money? Go for it. Pay well, your. I, I say to I imagine if I if I lost three iPhones and I had no money left, what Android phone would I get? That's what I I'd say. To, like, and, then, and that's and then, like, I don't know, just as a, a kind of. A well, I'll give you an. You go. You go with the Moto G for one hundred and fifty dollars. So, so, but these the. All right. I, maybe there is. There's a special. There's there's a diamond in the rough that we can we can get to later. But let's put the phones aside. It's interesting that they didn't do the phones as, as a separate event. They're Google. It's Google Fi enabled. So if you have yeah. a Google Fi invite, you basically it's an MVNO with Sprint and T-Mobile. Right. So ten dollars per ten dollars per gigabyte, whatever it is. Yeah. All right. So put the phones to bed though. So what's the what's the next thing in their in their speed? The, rate. Then they went. Then they went right into Google Photos, which has three new features. Oh, I didn't. Know. I see I, that. I totally missed. I did which is which is they're awesome. So the first one is shared albums. So let's say oh, we go the, to an event. The family albums. I okay. Yeah. Go, okay. Yeah. So so I take a bunch of photos, and Justin was at the same event. We're at we're at uh, Paul's wedding, and we want to add it to, a, to Paul's wedding. Well. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, go, but go on. I put the photos on, and then I send Justin a link that says, here, you can add to this. And you can then just choose your photos, and it adds to it. So, okay. So it's – you have to send it to a Gmail account? It's a Google account. It's uh, not a Google uh, Plus right, account. Not a, a Gmail – like, like just a Google account, which can be any email address, of course. But what if there was like hanky-panky going on? Before people went to the 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 wedding ceremony, I mean, do you just share a whole day's worth of photos, or how no, do you, you get choose? Things? No, you choose. Just like, yeah. I mean, you're you're choosing it. So what 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 was it? Was Flock on iOS supposed to do this? Did Facebook even buy Flock? Is it? I mean, people have tried this before, like event based photo taking, or where if you go to a wedding, they give you a short URL and like you do it that way. Well, the issue is is that we have I have a we have a son. We both have camera phones. We both take pictures. We both have it on different devices. Where do we aggregate the photos? Okay, that's a cool. That's, so, so tell tell people who both is. You mean you and your wife? Yeah. Okay. Well, it okay. wasn't one hundred percent obvious. Uh, okay. And then, both. 
Okay, and then so now we have a server and we try to do it, but at the end of the day, we're going to lose photos. I mean, it's just going to happen. So they're saying here, we're going to make it easy. You can choose and you can, it's not all your photos. It's the ones you choose to add to certain albums. So albums are kind of flagged, not only as shared, but as joined or something. Yeah, because it's based on the sharing the sharing permissions. So if you share, you're basically giving editing privileges to another Gmail account to have to deal with the album. I wonder if there's going to be a story like on a hard copy if that even still exists about a spouse finding out that another spouse was cheating or something because the pictures get accidentally. But in any case, Google has has probably ironed out those issues you're saying, and at least they make it easier and they bring it to the surface as something a consumer would find. Here's how. I mean, it makes sense. Like, if, if it's you, if it's if it's like, a, of course, it's a family. So, if it's a, a graduation party or a birthday or something, in the course of a couple of minutes, everyone with an Android phone or probably eventually an iOS, maybe it's even now, I don't know, yeah. what can have an album that has all the best pictures from that event is what you're saying with minimal Correct. curation. Okay, so that's that's cool. What are the other two okay. features? Uh, the other one is that you can label people. A private like and the, and they the, the keyword there was private, so it, it finds your faces. But if you want to label someone like a certain thing like mom, so it says Della Cohen, it would be mom. Mm-hmm. You can then search mom wedding, and it will find all photos that that tag that have mom in it that you defined and wedding. And they put some corny joke. Uh, if you don't want your uncle wants to be called Dutch Thunder, you can label him as Dutch Thunder. I mean, is that from what movies? I don't even know what that's from. No, no, it's just the fact that there was like a hundred people in the audience and no one laughed. Oh, okay. I'm glad that I didn't get the joke either. Okay. And there was no joke to it. It was just like if you want to maybe name it was an insult. Crazy... I don't. I don't know. If you want to name true. your crazy uncle some weird so, name? Okay. This this seems like another like fine tuning of something that was already there because the in the past Google would kind of like not force you, but if you started tagging people's faces they would get notifications of it and then they could see those albums. So you're saying, okay, okay. So basically, yes. Now it's just private. All right. What, where, where are we on time? Prime time. Like we're, halfway. we're halfway. We're halfway. halfway. So what's the third feature for photos? And the third thing is better Chromecast support. So you can cast it to your TV and you can say, I o- do not leave the go to the Google plus app, the Google photos app while I go somewhere else and queue something else. So you can be f- swiping through an album and you stop on this photo and someone says, Oh, I remember this thing in the email you can pull up your email on locally on your device and TV won't be showing it. Like it's not mirroring the. Okay. the so there's, so that, and it's not local. It's basically, it gives precedence to a cloud gallery of photos that you're choosing to, to display sort of. You're ba- it ba- yeah. Basically allows you to say, stay on the photos until I explicitly tell you to remove it okay. while I do something else. Uh, then, okay. Then they did the $15 uh, Google uh, music family plan. Right. Okay. So they're, 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 they got on that bandwagon, which matches Apple music. Okay. Okay. And then you want to do, we have, we have three things left the pixel C, the Chromecast or Android M. All right. So let's get through the pixel C. Cause I literally just saw, uh, you know, a couple of slides of it. It's a tablet. It runs Android. And how much and is it that? Has, it's $499. Uh-huh. It's 10.1 inch. But how much is the, is the keyboard included or what? No, like I said, it's just like the others, and it's $150 for the keyboard. And the Pixel... The 149 Pixel, for the keyboard. The Pixel, that's, that strikes me as a lot, but the, the Pixel was touchscreen, right? I mean, that was... that was that Well, was the Pixel, Pixel was $900, oh, and, it was, and it ran Chrome OS. This mm-hmm. is a tablet, a very high-end tablet, 10 inches, again, USB Type-C, but the, the keyboard is actually the thing that stands out. So you can make a really good tablet, but the keyboard works with it. It's not like the Surface with the clamps. And they said it doesn't have like a kickstand. It's a completely removable keyboard. Mm-hmm. And instead of the induction three dots that Apple has on the iPad Pro, it's metal around. So it also acts like a, a clamshell case. And it charges inductively. Okay. But, okay. So does the tablet power the keyboard though? Or do you have to ta- charge okay. the keyboard separately? So the, so the tablet... So the keyboard is Bluetooth and it needs to be powered. Mm-hmm. So it gets power by induction charging while the tablet is off. So while you're not using it, they're saying that like five minutes will charge it for like three months. Okay. And that, okay. So it's induction. So, I mean, can I then infer from that, that the tablet can also charge wire, uh, wirelessly? Well, wire, the word wireless charging was never used in the entire keynote. So, okay. so they're okay. 
I mean, that's that's almost uh, that's that's kind of nice to consumers because wireless charging, as like when you see it in, in that Samsung commercial where they're all putting it on the charging bay, the wires, right? I mean, it's it's the phone has to be in such close proximity. Okay, but the point is that. The difference is, is that it's a substantial keyboard. They're okay. claiming that it's full size, but the problem is they got rid of certain characters, like uh, the pikes, and the and they they move stuff around. So if they got so, rid of the pipeline character, that means that yeah. the enter key is probably it's right vertical. Here. The enter key is right at the end. It's so it, so it, it's it seems like this is a really bad trade off, but people are saying it's okay because the fact it's full. So you dropped seven hundred fifty bucks on this. It's it strikes me. No, no, no it's five hundred plus. Oh, okay, oh, six fifty. So, sorry, six fifty. So six fifty. But what's the iPad Pro? It's this. It's a ten point one inch. This this the is iPad 10. Pro is twelve inch. twelve inches. Or it's, oh, right. yeah, twelve twelve point nine. I think. It's, okay. it's almost a whole oh, like a MacBook size yeah, screen. Okay, but the keyboard is. I I don't think the MacBook the the iPad Pro keyboard is anything like really substantial. It's interesting that Google went for this. I, I mean, it. it I. I just, I, you know, I just don't even get that form factor, frankly. I don't really get. Well, I don't. Do you use tablets anymore? Almost not, not at all. I, I, I powered mean, up the Nexus Seven only to do the Wi-Fi testing. And, and I, I mean, I, I'm not really like I. I much rather the bigger phone. So I got the six P, five point seven inches. That's what I use to check everything. I have my iPad two there, but I guess because it's slow, I don't really want it. I, I use my iPhone and I use my multitudinous yeah. computers. Okay, so, so let's. I mean. It's. I, I guess I, I better look at the the, the industrial design. Of this thing was top notch. Is that part of what they're saying too? Yeah, and the, and the the rumors are that that they did not. The Nexus Nine was a flop. People, the 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 design. The, the so this is not. Oh, I'm back. sorry. So th- this is this is probably the important thing. You said this earlier. The the Pixel runs Chrome OS. This is an Android no, no. Ta- tablet. Yes. Or is it a, okay. Okay. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. It's a uh, the Pixel. The Pixel runs Chrome OS. This is Pixel, and I guess. I don't know. I think they're 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 branding it as Pixel is the the thing that you touch, but I don't know. It's weird. It's weird that they're making this to run Android. Okay, so it's not Chrome OS, which okay, which I would love. I would love this to be Chrome OS. So it's and okay. I get. I I, I don't. I don't. There's I don't a there's a there's an, uh, there's an uh, uh, Amazon Echo type thing it has four speakers so so well part of android iPad, and, the ipad pro also i mean that was somewhat one something that well they, can you do okay. siri when it's off uh you can with the 6s series i don't know if the ipad pro or any okay, iPad. so so the new thing is now everything is voice action so they're saying while this is off on all the phones you can do uh you can do Including your your your, your ten inch tablet screen. I mean, it doesn't. So even when you say it. okay, I'm going to say okay, Google ten thousand. And your whole your house lights up. Okay, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many of these things. Were there any giveaways at this keynote? This is not Google I O, so there were no giveaways, right? No, there were no giveaway. Well, look, we don't know. They they canceled it. There was no Randy Mo- uh, Newman outro. It was just good. I, good Sundar. Good good choices. Put the money where it's okay. Where it's now now what I did notice if you watched it. They everyone was by first name, so we would like to welcome Sundar. They said Sundar Pichai, but then it was like, okay, next guy, Mario, talk. And then Mario's like, okay, I'm done. We're gonna bring it to this guy. First, <laughs> this is name. hot. Now it's just, I mean, that's yeah, no, no, okay. that, that was literally how fast it went. It was just like, bam, okay, I showed you this one. I hit the home button. Now let's bring up the email <laughs> to push the power button. Oh, she's done. I have my assistant here. Too. I like, I like, okay, it sounds like this is the keynote I should have watched. Okay, what do we have left time? Because the Chromecast, see, that is that was the. The most important thing, though, the thirty-five bucks, and then there was another one that's thirty-five bucks is only for audio. That I didn't under the Chromecast concept. I saw the image with the dongle and the the, the hockey puck thing. Very cool. It makes perfect sense, like plugging it in, taking it out, probably from a Wi-Fi um, like uh, reception. Well, I don't necessarily too. like the 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 circular disc. I, I don't. I, really think have an opinion. I think it's. Well, but I, I thought that what they would have done, they would have had one product. And you fold the HDMI thing into the puck or something, and there's also a stereo out. I don't understand. It's cool that they're doing an audio Chromecast now. Well, hold on, hold on. So the first, the Chromecast, okay, it's an update from last year. Basically, it has more powerful hardware. Basically, what they're going to try and do is prefetch content. So if you're on Netflix, it's going to know that you watch certain shows. So maybe in your queue, it's going to start prefetching. 
so that Netflix starts much faster. That's one of the negatives that I do have with I'm my Chromecast. I'm asking you on the Chromecast. It's not really been a huge problem for me. Well, my problem is uh, I really like the Roku and I really like the I, Amazon I, Fire. I, so I don't know if you've used a Chrome box for meeting before, but that's a $1,500 device, okay? I put one in okay. in one of my offices and it's cool enough. It's, it's actually running on really beefy hardware, but it doesn't have the same functionality as uh, a, a $35 Chromecast, which just pissed me off. I just, I mean, so the, well, no, you're running a Chrome box, which is Chrome OS. Exactly, and it's super beefy, so why can't they have an app on that that is a, a, soft, a software have. Chromecast, is my point. But anyway, this Chromecast, it sounds like this whole year, how, how long ago was the Chromecast released? Was it two years ago? It was, no, it was one okay, year. Okay, so it sounds like they had supply chain people over the course of this year sourcing the cheapest, best hardware. They made the design, and that's what it is. It's, it's cheaper, it's the same price, faster and better. Yeah, look, I don't think that you need to uh, – if you're connecting it to your TV, I don't – unless – oh, it does uh, 5 gigahertz yeah, I, I, wireless. I, I, that's, a, I mean, that's pretty – I mean – Okay, so if you need that, you upgrade. I don't – like I said, I don't necessarily have a big problem with my Chromecast. I have two. I have one here and one in my parents' house. But the big thing that I think I'm sold on, and I'm going to try and buy a few of them, is the, the Chromecast Puck for audio, which basically is recreating Sonos. You plug it into the auxiliary in of your – of your speaker when you still have to power, which is a little weird. And then you can send audio to it and it will do audio syncing. When you say audio, it's audio mirroring. You mean, I saw it was uncompressed, but it's no, no. So if you have five, five of these hooked up to five different speakers, they'll all play the same it, thing. It, it's, it's cool. I mean, the thing that Sonos is like a whole house solution. This is like a cheap way to make good on good, like hardware, like good speakers that otherwise you'd have to plug an old iPad, uh, iPhone into or something. That, well, that's what I, that's exactly how I'm going to use it. But if you have a couple of these lying around, a couple of iHomes and different bedrooms, you hook this up to it, and you can when instead of you can have your alarm clock wake you up to like ten different speakers at the same time. Okay. I mean, so, but is the functionality in the updated Chromecast app does that work with the old devices too? Yeah, well, I got the update. Yes, I, yes, okay. it does. So that includes no, not the not the pre cache. Oh, no, not that's the, the hardware. Thing. Okay, all right. Yeah. Now, now, I mean, it just seems like there these things. And they also the current Chrome the the current Chromecast Chromecast, excuse me, looks much more appealing. I'd say than the old one. It just if you see that on a store shelf, it looks like a lollipop. This should have been a release with Android lollipop. I mean, it looks like it looks like okay. these things will fly. I mean, I, I don't know. But you need three different. You need three different. You need six different SKUs now because of the colors, because of lemonade and I, three color. No, the three colors and the three audios. It's six okay. SKUs. I, I, I good for Google on this. I think this is like this is this is like the Honda Civic of consumer electronics. It, it's it's really it's it's good. It, it does what it's supposed to. Well, the question the question is now all these sticks are all thirty five dollars. Which one are you going to buy? Google. Well, I like I said, I like the Fire Stick a lot, and the Roku is a little more money, but I like want it. To be able to send your photos to it and be in the Google ecosystem while you're there, and then it, once you get to playing Netflix or playing or playing Spotify, <laughs> it's all the same. You want the fastest one, you know, unless you really need to talk to Alexa versus. Google. You know what it is? I was talking to I was talking to my wife, and I think still the leaning back thing with the TV. I don't want to reach for my phone. I want my phone to be my Twitter that stream. But I want the remote, and the Chromecast does not it, have a remote. Just like they, they came out with that kind of wonky but cool Ethernet adapter for it, I bet you they could they could do a Bluetooth remote thing for it. Too. I see what you're saying. Now. Okay. And the Chromebook hard, the Chromecast hardware allows you to play games, but I, I don't see okay. games. We, in this, you said this in the Apple TV show. Paul and I skewered you on it and said you're going to eat your words, yeah. and I, I, you're going to do the same thing here. The Android store will be on the Chromecast or the Nexus Player or whatever the hell thing you're doing. Okay, were there any more announcements in there? In their, uh, you know? well, Marshmallow was just a rehash. 30% better battery life on current hardware. That's what they're Those saying. Those engineers must have had, like, someone with a whip standing over them. Because how did they do – I mean, that – They're saying basically, okay, it knows when your phone is not being moved. You've said that. So you have said that moved, about Androids a million times, Heim. It's on the, it knows but that's that, what they're that, saying. Okay. And you're – I mean, in, with iOS 9, they use – the, the ambient light sensor to not turn the screen on when it's in your pocket. Apple does, of course. Is that what you're saying? That that's what it does now? 
It's doing it's doing whatever mojo it is. It's it's called Doze. They're trying to figure out when you're not using it, and they're using their machine learning algorithm. So so, so here's to... the thing. it's turning a bunch of stuff off, which is cool. And then when the second you turn it on, all of that diagnostics and analytics and like the telemetrics, whatever they call it, that's going right to Google, and that's costing you battery life and data. Is it worth the time? Uh, Look. <laughs> Look, I don't know. We're going to find that next week. Android and I'll expect it on my week. Nexus 7 when. Really? Next week. I will see I will see the image. Give it, the way the way Google does is that 25% they get it on day okay. 1. If those 25% have a problem, yes. they fix it and then the next 25% get it in a few more days. So if you're not if you're on that last group, you're really okay. pissed but off. It, you know, I would say holistically speaking, it just uh I don't know. Something about if we if we have just because of the time of year, this keynote versus Apple's, I give the win to Google. I think I think the, the product launch was cool. Um, it it was way uh, too fast. I, but I'm in, just saying you look at you look at you look at what you you can take home from it, and it's just I I, I like it. I I, I I I was a little bit more surprised by it or something, and I, I think that the you know the the, the products are cool. So so, I, so well, who do you give the win to? I mean, this was this was like a shotgun like announcement. This was okay, guys. Fasten your seatbelts. We're not going to. So stop you want like a Peter Jackson and style three and a half hour keynote? That's what you want. And you want not only one no, keynote, I want, you want no. three keynotes in succession. Actually, the third keynote has to be part one and two. So four. I mean, what? Look, they stuffed a lot. I would kind of liked it. Okay, like an hour and a half. Like take a few minutes to just to take a deep okay, breath. So, I want the. I want this is. I don't want any live demos. So get rid of the live demos. I don't like that. I I I, I don't need Johnny Ive telling me it's made from the highest grade aluminium. Can I, just as a as but, a tangent, if you haven't seen Elon Musk uh, introduction of the the Model X by Tesla, I said to myself like out loud probably five times without even really thinking about it. That is so cool. I was watching that keynote, and that's where the live demos. I was, I mean, uh, some of that stuff blows you away with it with the car. Anyway. So, so I, I wish I that they would have taken a breath this 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 fall. Not not Apple. This, this, uh, you want them to take so, a breath? Okay. Well, anyway. Look, I, I did like the Google because it did did not waste my time and they went quick and they didn't rehash the same like, okay, we're going to go through every OS 10 feature that okay, we already Okay, so this is what about. I'll ask you to, to end the 30 minutes. And I, if, if we want to stay on and do questions uh-huh. or something or bring someone else on via Blab afterwards, maybe we have uh-huh. like five minutes for that. But Haim, what is Android N going to be? My wife said Nutella. Well, but it's they, not they do be KitKat. Nutella. So someone in the brand, like the I don't know the nougat, nougat. So nougat is like a general term, right? It's what's inside of not Snickers, but Milky Way. Is that right? Is that what, nougat is like? What about Nosh? I think Did you it like Nosh? Okay. It's not. It's not. The, it's not. The, it's, not the, it's not. It's not only the, like the alliterative name or the the, 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 the the sound. It's also the actual letter. So no. Uh, Nuts, nuts, nectarines is not a candy. I, I don't know, but okay. So we, we got to wait a year for that. Okay, so this has been episode one eighty seven of In Thirty covering the Google. It was a keynote, right? Yeah, the Nexus the announcement. Nexus announcement. Okay, nexus. thank you. For-